Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Yes I can cook while I crochet. I have skills. Just pass me the phone. Hello pizza maker. Yeah I'd like two medium pizza please. See it's that easy. And without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. And welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Crochet Tootie. This is a cowl and a hoodie combination. Also could be referred to as a turtleneck and hoodie. Today I'm going to show you the tricks of the trade to be able to convert any cowl or turtleneck into a hoodie format using my hoodie um, information that I have for you. Now when I look at this particular pattern you can do many things with this particular concept. It is a one piece unit. You can see the entire piece is right here and what we have to consider is how the cowl or the turtleneck is placed into this as we're going. So it is a one piece. So you can wear it fully up with the in front of your face. You can pull down your cowl and enjoy the hood. You can pull down your hood just have the cowl and you can just have it as a neck warmer like so. So it's a really cool concept. I put some a tie on here with some pom poms. You can decide to do that if you wish. But the basically the concept is really quite straightforward and it's actually really easy. So let me show you the example that I have here and this is the original that I have. So here's the concept and this is the camel stitch cowl. We taught this actually a few days ago. So I'm gonna put a link in the more information of this video if you would like to do this particular cowl. So this particular hoodie is built on top of this cowl that you have here. So it looks really awesome. So you have a right side and you also have a wrong side. And the reason why I'm saying that is no matter how you do this you have to always consider that. So the hood when you're looking at this here is the right side. This is considered the wrong side. So the way that it's folded into each other is that when you're wearing it you want the right side of the cowl or the turtleneck to face out and you also want the hoodie to face out for the right side. So if you don't do it properly what can happen is that when you go to put the hoodie up into this project if you don't do it properly you may see the back of the cowl instead of the front. So that might be quite a disappointment. So there's an easy way to be able to figure how to do that as well. So let's pretend that you don't see the hood. You just see the cowl. I love the cowl. It's awesome and it fits me and I want to add a hood to it. What you have to consider is that when you go to start this process of adding the hood you have to make sure that the cowl is turned inside out. So when you do this and it states this in the instructions you're going to notice where you stopped and started on the cowl. So you want to be able to put that to the back side of it. So just turn it, turn it so that it's on the back. So therefore the good side or the complete front side of the cowl is here in front. So when you go to start this particular project you wanna start so that the cowl is inside out so that when you are done with this and you're working with your hood once you're done you're just gonna take this cowl and just push it up through the inside of this. And when that happens then is that the right side or the good side of the cowl is then gonna face out of the hood when you're done with that. So it's a really neat concept and as I said this particular cowl is available in tutorial format. We have that linked in the video description. So what my goal today is to show you how to add a hood to any cowl or turning turtleneck that you have. I'm gonna use my concept here of the crisscrossing and single crochet and I'm gonna just use a base of a hat because I don't have a cowl to work with at the moment because the concept is actually pretty straightforward and it's really quite easy. So let's begin to examine that first. So going back to the instructions I wanna uh, turn your attention to page number two. So the base instruction for the camel stitch um, uh, cowl that's here has been put into this. So I did do a chaining of 70 which was uh, fine for me but say you got a smaller head than I do then what you can do is just keep it an even number so you can reduce down to 66, 60, 58. You can determine what you need to do. So you can do the first round. So chain your amount that you want and then do the first round of just doing um, one single crochet in the first stitch and one half double crochet in each round and determine it at that point whether you think the turtleneck or the cowl is gonna be too big for you. You don't want this cowl to be too sloppy, right? So if you needed a smaller size I also did figure out with the help of my tester Nancy is that we think that it's about 40 chains for a toddler size. You may wanna just be cautious about uh, doing this concept for younger children. There is a lot of material that will be covering a face if you do that. So I leave that to your discretion. So you can do this and it's really quite a neat idea. So you can really customize this particular concept but keep it an even number because it does matter. 
So that's something that you can consider for yourself. Also we have page number three. In page number three I talk about flipping the cowl inside it which I already demonstrated. So once you have that done and you figured out that you put the seam line or the join line that is on the back so that you're looking at the front side of the cowl but on the inside out concept. That's where you're gonna start your journey. So what you need to do when you're doing the first row you have to keep it an even number for my cowl to work. So that's the only thing. So let's just say that we're gonna leave two stitches empty at the front which I think you should. So what you're going to do is just keep it an even number on your first row and then from that the whole uh, concept will work for you. So we're gonna get yourself started then with doing rows one and two and then we re uh, do rows number three and four which is your, your repeat. So you can repeat then re rows three and four 12 more times to get to the height that you, uh, for an adult but you can stop at any time and make it even shorter. Just make sure that you're con kind of final following the instructions. So repeat three and four 12 times and then it says uh, repeat the third row one more time. So the third row gets repeated and then that's when you're going to um, uh, fast or that's when you're gonna do your final crossing when you go to do that particular concept. So you can stop at any time just make sure that the third row is your last row. So I'm going to now take you to an example and I'm going to show you a hat and I'm gonna build from that just as a, an example. So there we so go. So what I'm about to show you is that I don't have a cowl ready to show this particular example but I can have a ring here. This is a hat and this is approximately within the size that you would want a turtleneck uh, for the outside of this here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna show you the hood and I'm just gonna use the base of this hat just to demonstrate that for you. And so what I'm going to do is that we're just gonna zoom in. So pretend you don't see hat. This is a gingham hat. I will put this link in the more information of this video as well. This is also filmed as a tutorial so it's part of my samples. So your first step that you wanna do if you're doing this concept is that you wanna turn the project that you're working with, the cowl or the turtleneck inside out. And that's where you're going to begin your story. The next thing you need to do is that you need to figure out where the join is which is right here in this hat. So what I want to do is just turn this and just keep my hand on it and just keep it to the back side of this. So this would be considered the front of the project here when we're going to do the hoodie. And that's what we're gonna do next. So make sure that's at the back at the middle and then we're gonna join pretty close to the center. So what I'm going to do is just that I'm roughly gonna eye up where the middle is and what I want to do is that I wanna leave the two very middle empty. So just guess, like it's it's a cowl so it's, or a turtleneck. So even if the, the back line is off by a little bit it's not gonna matter too much. And so even if this is just worked in rows going up and down instead of uh, doing the rounds like you see, you wanna just equally space out your project. So just start new yarn. So you have to have a fresh new start because of the way that the cowl is positioned and just pick what you think is closest to the center and then begin your story. So at this point we're going to then join and I'm gonna do a standing single crochet just to get myself started. So it's already on the hook. Pull through and then pull through two and hold. Right, and pull through two and then that's it. That's your single crochet. So my goal here is to start counting and I wanna make sure it's an even number. So I don't remember how many is in the round here. So what I want to do is that I wanna make sure it's an even number. So even if I have to just leave one empty or I leave three empty just to get that even number just make sure it's even. So just go all the way around but don't uh, just make sure it's an even number and make sure they don't connect to each other. So I'll do that right now. So this is two, three, four, five and six and continue around. I'll be back in a moment. So I've come this far. I'm at 70 stitches. So if I wanna go even more I can as long as it's an even number to fill that even closer. So 71 and 72. You can decide what works for you. I'd recommend though that you don't share the same stitch. Keep a little bit of a space. So as long as it's an even number it'll work. So let's turn and work and do the second row. In the second row what you're going to do is chain three and that's your first double crochet. So the next two stitches are going to be used as a crisscross. So as for double crochet. So wrap the hook, skip the first one and go to the second and double crochet and then come to the one that you skipped. So just shift it forward like this here and come in and go into that one. And that's a, it's gonna create a crisscross like you see. 
Okay, and you're gonna do that all the way across. So skip the next one and double crochet in the next. Can I give you a little design trick? In these crisscrosses what happens is, is that the wrong side of this stitch work pops out. It actually creates a texture. So I intentionally put this uh, so that when it folds up it creates that uh, texture that you see. So when you started the way that I showed you of the inside out and starting with the first row going around it's intentional. So I skip the next one and double crochet the next. So there's always a method to the madness for my texturing. Because some stitches look better on the wrong side of the work. So skip the next one, double crochet the next and come into the one you skipped. And please do this all the way across. I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way across and if you kept an even number this will completely work out for you. So I'm crisscrossing and then the very last stitch right here is a double crochet. And this is where you're gonna turn your work. So now we're going to do rows number three and four which is part of your repeat. And you will notice in the particular project when we go to do this is that there's an angle on the hood. So this is how it's achieved. So here you can notice that the hood actually projects outward. So it's gonna be row number three. Every time you do it it's going to lean a little bit more and more and more. So it's only on row number three that you're gonna do that and it allows you to roll back the top of the hood here so that it has a really nice finished look. Let's begin row number three. So my goal for when I got started row number one and two did not have an increase at all but now row number three is part of the repeat so three and four. So you're gonna start off with and you're gonna chain up one and in the very first stitch you'll put in two single crochet. So one and two. And then you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way across. And on the very final stitch you'll put two single crochets in that stitch as well. So every time you complete row number three you're increasing the count across by only two stitches which provides that really nice angle for the hood. So single crochet all the way across and meet me at the end of the uh, row in just a moment. So I'm coming up close to the end of the row just single crocheting all the way across and I'm looking for that turning chain which will be the finish. Now the way that this crisscross it looks like this is the last stitch. Just pull this out you still have the other half of this crisscross to worry about and then you have the turning chain. So in the turning chain you will apply then this is the last stitch two single crochets in there. So we've increased it on the front side or sorry the, on the beginning of the row and then at the end of the row which increases by two. Let's turn our work and do row number four which is part of the repeat. So in row number four you're gonna chain up three which counts as your first double crochet. And so now you're gonna start in the next two. Okay, so you're gonna do your crisscross here. You're gonna skip the first one and then go to there. So every time you're doing the next crisscross row it's only gonna increase by one crisscross each time you do it. Because there's an increase of just two stitches uh, in the row below when we did that. So you're gonna crisscross, skip the next one and then crisscross. It's known as the X stitch as well. And so you're just gonna crisscross yourself all the way across and the increase happened on the row below so you don't have to worry about doing any increases on these crisscrossings to make it a lot simpler for you to follow and therefore this will have the nice lean. So continue to crisscross all the way to the other side. I'll be back in a moment. So I'm coming up all the way across. I'm crisscrossing and just doing the last crisscross here and then the very final stitch is a double crochet in the last single. So all you have to do now is just turn your work and repeat, keep repeating then three and four. Now I do suggest 12 times but that was using the six and a half millimeter size um, K crochet hook for the original sample. So your hook size will matter. So you can try this at any time. So what you can do to try this, let's just uh, do this um, really quickly and let me just reset myself mentally and then I'll be right back. So what I'm gonna do is that say you've done a whole whack of this meaning a lot. What you wanna do is take your cowl and just pull it up through the inside of the hole. Okay, so like this. And so then the good side of the cowl will then be shown. So this here is then your hood that's being built up 
right here. So when you go to try on your cowl, this obviously I have a hole in it and so you can stick out your, your, your neck and then see how far this is building up on top of your head. So you just keep doing that over and over and over and then it's a great way to do it. Also you'll notice that some of the times you'll see some of the part of the cowl at, at the base here. That's no biggie. So what I want you to do is repeat uh, rows number three and four and then when you're happy with the height of this then what you can do is just try it on and you have to do uh, one more row of number three and that's what I'm gonna do next. So I'm just gonna reset myself to keep myself inside out. So if you go to continue to work on it just pull it back inside out for the cowl here and then just continue along. So I'm going to repeat for then say this is the final row. So I'm going to just chain up one and do two singles into the first. So this is repeating a number three and then jam in one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way across and make sure I put two single crochets in the last stitch and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming up and I'm pretending this is my last row that I'm happy with the height of the hood and making sure you're coming across single crocheting and in the turning chain you'll put in your two single crochets. So I'm happy with the height. It fits me. It's awesome. Remember this is all make believe. So what I want to do is that I want to start positioning this to seal the top of the hood and close it down. Let me just take you to the instructions next. So here on the very last page you're just going to fold the top of the hoodie and it's gonna be much bigger than what I have because it's growing out and what you wanna do is you wanna single crochet yourself going between the two layers and you're going to seal this together so it's going to meet at the very back of the hood like so. So you're gonna do that and then you just continue to single crochet yourself across. Let's show you how to do that. So instead of going back and forth what we want to do is that we want to fold the hood in half so that the back is right over here. And so you're going to start and you have the same amount of stitches because it's an even number. So you wanna go through the first stitch here and capture the original stitch in behind. And all you're just gonna do is single crochet yourself between the two sections. So just grabbing the first and the second. Once you grab the first you can sandwich them together. It's quite easy to do. And you're just gonna single your crochet yourself all the way back to the back of the hood and that will be over here and that will close down and you will have the actual opening for your hood. Obviously it will be bigger but that's how you're gonna do it and once you get there you can fasten off and then um, just weave in your ends. It's that simple. Now I do have some ties that I are tied that I added that I did with pom pom. Let's talk about that next. Just as an added feature, this is Daniel's idea. You can chain with your counts here about 91, or you can do any length of chain. It really doesn't matter. And once you have that done, then you're just going to single crochet second chain for the hook all the way across your chain. Now before you apply your pom poms, if you decide to, you want to weave it strategically in and out of your particular cowl. So once you have this all positioned make sure that you turn the cowl so it's inside. Uh, just push it up so that the good side of the cowl is facing out so that you get a good perspective on how you wanna do it. And for myself I just put two crisscrosses in front. So when you look at this example here I would put the tie into the first section here and then skip down two and then come back out here. And I would do that strategically but you can decide what you would like to do. If you like to tie without pom poms then you're done and if you'd like to put the pom poms on then what you're just gonna do is just sew the pom pom directly to the edge of your tie if you would like to do that. This is really quite a simple concept and once you're good to go um, everything should be ready and you should be having a great time. So this is really quite a neat idea and this is called the tootie and this is a cow slash hoodie or turtleneck hoodie whatever you wanna call it. It's very customizable and I think the pattern is quite easy to follow and I found with myself it does not take long to make one of these. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.